Hello and welcome to the Thursday, May 18th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier wrote a quick diary about an increase in the use of self-extracting RAR files that he's observing. Self-extracting files are always interesting because by definition as they're being expanded they will execute code same here with uh, these rar files the attacker can pretty much just include a simple visual basic script as is shown in this example and then execute it as the files are being expanded most of the files in the archive are actually harmless and just uh, garbage data but the script and a couple configuration files to go with it are what actually causes the damage here. Xavier offers a Yara rule to detect a self-extracting RAR files. They shouldn't really be that hard to spot given that usually they also just use .exe as an extension, which probably should be treated with caution anyway and stripped out in any mail filters. And then we have an interesting vulnerability in Waymo smart plugs. Uh, these smart plugs are made by Belkin and it's a pretty straightforward buffer overflow in the friendly name. The name is supposed to be up to 30 characters long, but this limit is really only enforced in the app that's used to control the plug. If you can send the update name command directly without the app, then you can specify whatever length you want, giving you ample space for a buffer overflow. Amit Serper and Ruven Yakar, who discovered the vulnerability, did write a lengthy blog including proof of concept exploit code. They did report the vulnerability early February to Belkin. However, the particular device is no longer supported, so you will be out of luck here and pretty much have to upgrade to a different device. In order to exploit this vulnerability, you need to send data to the embedded web server of the plug, so it's easily exploitable if you happen to actually expose this plug to the internet. Not very common, I would hope, but certainly not unheard of. But well, odd vulnerabilities like this don't just affect home user devices. The Wago PFC100 industrial uh, controller also suffered from an interesting vulnerability in the license page of all places. So this device has a web-based admin interface as they all have and one particular page lists third-party license information. For example, the product includes software with various open source licenses and essentially this page lists the different components and what licenses they're subject to. Now when I see a page like this I assume it's just a static HTML page. Well uh, not in this case. It's actually being dynamically assembled by decompressing various license files that are stored on the device and the package name is a user controlled variable that is just passed to the xz command, the command that is being used for decompression here. So by passing an interesting package name like semicolon id, you'll be able to execute arbitrary code. Pretty simple to exploit and a proof of concept exploit is included in the advisory. And I mentioned a few times before that when we're dealing with sort of these IoT style vulnerabilities, of course, we often see a flood of these Mirai style exploits hitting these devices and sometimes being successful. But in the flood of uh, this noise, sometimes more sophisticated actors are hiding. And Checkpoint has another example here where a Chinese state-based threat actor, as they identifying it, is actually using some of these routers to then install their own software, mostly proxies, in order to build an attack infrastructure. This is of course very valuable because you end up with many, many sort of more or less anonymous uh, home and small business devices that are hard to block and uh, 
also may never get updated, so you may never get evicted from the respective compromised device. The payload of these attacks is also a bit more complex than what you sort of see in your average run-of-the-mill exploit. Typically, again, these Mirai bots or crypto uh, coin miners and the like will typically just sort of install a couple additional binaries or scripts and then run them. In this case, it will actually alter the firmware, also likely to get more persistence. And in the case that uh, Checkpoint discussed, they specifically targeted TP-Link routers. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.